Hello and welcome to my first GNSS monitoring video. In this video I want to show you how to configure the communication in the GNSS receiver and in T4D server. Then I want to show you how to add a data storage module in T4D. This video is the first part of three videos. Please check out also the videos about real-time processing in the RTK engine and post-processing of stored raw data files. Here I'm connected to the test net 9 of the support team. Here in the first few activity, we can see the currently tracked satellites, internal data logging session and the already configured TCP IP outputs. I'll show you now how to add a new TCP IP output. Therefore, I'll go to IO configuration and modify one of our outputs. Here it's important to note the port, in our case 5023, and to check the data format. T4D receives and processes raw data, so I use this. The other options here I don't want to use for this demonstration, but it's important to check the epoch interval. The range here is between 50 Hz and 50 seconds, but I'll use the default of 1 Hz now. All the other defaults are fine and I finish this page with OK. To connect to this data stream, I have to open the T4D server UI and insert a device manager module. I'll use the default settings as I don't want to disable a satellite system. Beneath the device manager, I can add my GNSS receiver module. And I add a new configuration called demo. Okay. In the next step, I have to select the station and I have prepared uh, IGS site log files uh, with the data. It's available in this folder and uh, you can see the imported information here. So I have defined a station ID, name, code, the position, the antenna and receiver type. If you don't have uh, the position of your station available, I will recommend to use the Trimble RTX post-processing service. It's a free service where you can upload uh, TCO2 files uh, and define the coordinate system. And then you will receive a report with uh, the current position. I did this and I can add the new station. Okay. So here we see the new station with the name, the position and the antenna and receiver. Okay. The, here it's important to check the decoder group. Real time is the same as Trimble uh, RT7027 in the NetR9. So I have to select this. Now we have to configure the configuration to the server, so I have to enter here the IP address of the NetR9 and the defined port. This was 5023. Let's check this again. Correct IP address and correct port. Here in the receiver data, I can define things like elevation cutoff and the tracking interval. I'll use the one hertz again. I don't want to configure data logging via the receiver in T4D. I don't have an external sensor connected to the NetR9. And for this demonstration, I don't want to use storage integrity. In general, storage integrity is a nice feature. If you have a communication outage to the NetR9 and the data storage in T4D has missing epochs, uh, T4D connects to the NetR9 and downloads the internally stored data to have a complete data logging. But I don't use this now. So finish. And now my receiver is loaded and the data is coming in. 
at the moment we have the explanation mark as we don't have uh, the orbits but we'll see here in uh, the receiving information that the ephemeris of the satellites are arriving and now the icon is okay and uh, we can see yeah the receiver is tracking the satellite signals correctly with the GNSS receiver module, a uh, ephemeris manager module was added automatically. The ephemeris manager provides the received ephemeris from the GNSS receiver to the other modules for data processing. Beneath the GNSS receiver, I want to add a storage module now. So insert module, storage, OK. Here, T4D presents two predefined storage modules, and I'll use my TCO2 storage module. Here, you can see the properties with the available storage types. I will don't use Rhinex, but I'll use TCO2 file for now. Here you can see the storage path of my TCO2 files and I selected the folder structure enhanced day. I don't use add station code and a data rate of 1 Hz. You can select between 20 Hz and 10 minutes. Of course, this depends on the checking rate of the receiver module. I'll use the start next observation file after one hour to create hourly TCO2 files and finish. Now my little demo system is ready. I have a device manager with only one receiver. The receiver module connects to the NetR9 and gets raw data, which is displayed here. I store TCO2 files on my hard disk and I have a ephemeris manager module. Please see the other videos about real-time processing or post-processing in T4D server for further information about the monitoring with T4D 